So with Admirable Animations being retired for the time being, and my worst cartoons of the decade list being on hiatus for, well, the rest of the decade because I have absolutely no interest in doing the 1970s, I thought that I'd add something a little bit new to the repertoire. Well, kind of new. I've done this exact thing before, but I thought that it'd be interesting to begin or renew a series going over various cartoons and picking out my top and bottom ten episodes of each of them. I want to do this for a ton of cartoons, but... It's obvious that not every single show has 10 bad episodes, or 10 good episodes for that matter. So, obviously not every show that I'm going to go into is going to have both lists. But I'm going to go into all kinds of shows. Usually shows that I've talked about in the past, either on Admiral Animations or even Animated Atrocities. Although, to really see how audience is going to gauge this, the first few shows that I'm going to tackle are going to have... Both lists. So, let's start with that Ed and Eddie. I've talked about the show a couple of times in the past. I've done an animated atrocity on Sorry Wrong Ed, and an admirable on the couple of Christmas episodes that it had. Although, I think that I do need to state on record that I do legitimately love this show. Courage was my favorite cartoon cartoon, but Ed and Eddie came second. I could really analyze my love of this show, and will probably do that in the positive list, but there really is nothing more than I have to say that the show is just funny. Ed, Ed and Eddie makes me laugh. And in a year like 2020, this is the kind of show that I find myself watching when I don't want to wallow in my depression. And it's really funny because this is a show that I should hate if you know anything about me or my usual opinions. All of the characters are jerks. All of them. You know, except Naz, who doesn't have a personality. And it's about characters tricking and scamming and beating each other up and doing other immoral shit. The show can be really ugly, and it can be loud, and it seldom sticks to any kind of logic or story. In fact, one of the best episodes of the series was all about leaving logic behind. But unlike other cruel or ugly shows, it all seemed to work here, because it's both funny and charming. You know, usually. Very, very, very few shows bat a thousand and have every single episode be absolutely amazing. And Ed, Ed, and Eddie, that's not one of them. The show is usually able to take all the things I just mentioned in stride and actually use them. The cruelty doesn't matter too much because how it's shown is written and showcased as funny. And yeah, every character is a jerk, but the jerks seldom win. Sometimes, however, the comedy falls flat or the abuse becomes way too much to be funny. And we're going to look over the biggest misadventures the Eds had over their six seasons. Also, because Ed and Eddie has the worst episode titles in cartoon history that give no indication to what the episode actually is, I'm going to replace them with Friends-styled titles. Seriously. Look at this title. Tell me what the episode is about from that title alone. Even if you've seen the episode, you couldn't. Maybe if you've seen the episode, like, yesterday or earlier today, it's still a maybe. That is, until I say, it's the one where Johnny and Plank have a fight and go their separate ways. Seriously, this is probably a discussion off-topic, but Ed and Eddie just has the worst titles ever. I mean, yeah, it's kind of clever that they put Ed into every single title, but the titles fail for what titles are supposed to do, and that's to help identify which each episode episode is actually about. And almost none of the Ed, Ed and Eddie titles actually do that. So not to be controversial or anything, but Johnny Test did this better. I actually wasn't expecting to start off so big, but the first episode on the list is the biggest problem with the entire series. So let's talk about Lee, Marie, and May Kanker, the Kanker sisters. Honestly, it's better than what I want to do. What I want to do is rant about their existence for the full 20 minutes. Kanker sisters. More like the Cancer sisters, because that's what they are. The Kanker sisters are some of my least favorite characters in all of media. I mean, they probably wouldn't beat Brian Griffin, but they try as hard as possible to do so, and they've definitely surpassed DW. I don't even know where to begin articulating my hatred of these guys. I mean, the very obvious thing to say is that their entire shtick is sexual assault, but that's really surface level. And your story's getting weird. I'm a minor, stop! Their entire shtick is to ruin the show. 99% of the time, when the cankers are on screen, the show is worse off for this. They throw the entire dynamic of the show completely out the window. In terms of comedy, the biggest problem is that they are completely invincible. I don't recall a single time the cankers ever lost a battle or a scuffle with anyone but each other. They are completely unbeatable, which immediately gives your sympathy to those who they are against. Which doesn't work out, because whoever the cankers are against always, always, always lose. 
I'd say that they're Mary Sue's, but the show goes out of its way to portray them as the most unpleasant people possible. The show works its best when any character can get beaten down at any time, and anyone can gain a victory. Like, a lot of the people say that the Eds always lose, and they do lose a majority of the time, but every once in a while, they do come out on top, and it makes sure that there is enough benefit of the doubt. Some of their scams do actually work, but even more than that, some of the other characters end up falling further than the Eds. When the Kangers are on screen, there's no tension and there's no surprise. This wasn't funny when I was a kid, and yes, it's a lot less funny now because the cankers are just fucking creepy. But it goes against the fundamental strengths of Ed, Ed and Eddie. You see, this show is very slapstick driven. Characters getting hurt physically is the show's biggest asset. You know what's not slapstick? A character getting covered in kisses. The frightened reactions the Eds give aren't worth anything when you know they're not really gonna be hurt. But you wanna know what the worst thing about the cankers is? Canker ex machina. I can't tell you how many times this happened throughout the entire show. This happened more earlier on, but it did make appearances even later on in the series. Tell me, how many episodes have this? The Eds are on the top of the world, winning everything. But because we can't have the Eds win, the Kankers come out of nowhere with no reason of being in the story and basically win the day with their god mode powers. Let's see, off the top of my head, there's the hypnosis episode, the camera episode, the river rafting episode, the Canadian squirt gun episode, the wrestling episode. There was if it smells like an Ed, there's the episode with the key, there's the episode with the treasure map, there's the episode with the school starting. And I could probably go on and on if I just thought about it more. It's not so much that it's not funny. It was just that it was a really bad crutch that the writers used way too often. It felt like anytime they got stuck or just didn't know how to end the episode, they went, hey, cankers! And honestly, I would have just rather they cut to black in mid-sentence. And most of my hatred for this particular episode, the second episode of the series, comes from introducing these worthless assholes. It's the only episode in the series that has directly made other episodes worse by proxy, which might be forgivable if this episode wasn't so much of a slog. For a comedy series, season one was rather slow. It did have its gems for sure. Ironically enough, one of my favorite episodes of season one is the quarantine episode, but it wasn't as fast paced as some of the later seasons. But even in terms of season one, this episode is such a slog because whenever the cankers are in screen, the writers forget to be funny, and this is just about the most canker-centric episode of the entire series. In terms of a story structure, it's... not. The cankers turning against the Eds in the later half of it comes completely out of nowhere. How they seem to know who the Eds are ahead of time is never really explained. It's just a dull, boring as hell episode that left way too much of a legacy on what otherwise is a really good series. Everything I want is just outside the store. A lot of people said that the show went downhill after the Ed started school in season 5, and honestly, I don't agree with that. There are some really good episodes in that part of the series, and I think that it really did maintain its quality. Some of those episodes even made my top 10 list. Of course, I, I can get the argument when not every single episode after they went to school was, you know, fantastic. Here's the entire joke for I Know Speak to Ed. Ed, who is completely innocent and doesn't want to hurt anyone, keeps getting mailed wolf items from his pen pal. Ralph goes Zerk and repeatedly attacks him. This is the entire premise of the episode. I I'm sorry, it's just really hard to be laughing at the show when a character who does, like, nothing wrong whatsoever keeps getting punished for it. And spoiler alert, that's going to land a lot of episodes on this list. I mean, this joke here would have worked if it was Eddie getting mailed this wolf chunk because he was trying to scam his own pen pal. But no, the episode constantly beats down on Ed for no reason whatsoever. Even within the episode, other characters are saying that Rolf has completely lost it. And yeah, this isn't a good look for his character either. It's just an episode that really needed a second pass. And how it ends is just not helping. Yeah, it ends with this all being a prank of some kind. And Rolf apologizes to Ed by mailing all of the Eds to Norway! Instead of, I, I don't know, making it up to Ed for beating him senselessly for no fucking reason for the entire episode? This one, I have, like, no idea what they were thinking. It's bad. Everything I want is just outside the store. What's the X for? <laughs> Got the fairy creatures proof, Jimmy! The hardcore Ed, Ed, and Eddie fans probably expected this one to make my list. It is very hated within the fandom. So, what's wrong with it? Oh, that's easy. It does the absolute worst thing that you can do when you're making a comedy show. Tinker Ed simply isn't funny. At all. It is the most dull 11 minutes of the entire series. It's not so much that every joke falls flat, it's that they don't even really try to tell jokes in this episode. 
I mean, there's a subplot with Rolf trying to hide his load of baloney, but it, it doesn't really land. It's just kind of there. The slapstick is at an all-time low, and the plot isn't really much to speak of. The Eds try to convince Jimmy the fairy tales are real, and it ends with the Eds getting photographed in fairy tale costumes. Like, I, I don't even get how this is humiliating. This joke only works if a character would have some kind of issue with being seen in these costumes. But all of the Eds have worn tons of stupid costumes throughout the show. I don't think they'd care. I mean, how is dressing up like a fairy different than dressing up like a teddy bear? Please enlighten me on this one. Actually, on, on second thought, please do not enlighten me. I don't think that I want to know the answer to that one. I wish I could go on about this episode because it really is bad and boring, but it's hard to talk about what's not there. Like in any of the other worst episodes, there's usually a, a couple of gags that work. Maybe a non sequitur from Ed or a slapstick attack that is funny. But in this episode, there's just nothing. The wolf episode needed a second pass, but if this concept had such little thought and so few ideas, it probably should have been scrapped altogether. It's the only episode of the entire series that I could say is totally worthless and shouldn't have even been attempted. Nothing about it is really even salvageable. I mean, the fairy tale concept is interesting, but the episode itself proves that they just couldn't make it work. Everything I want is just outside the store. Okay, now I'm mad. Well, this episode is apt, isn't it? In this episode, Ed and Eddie trick Double D into thinking that he has a terminal illness. Yeah, it's really cruel. Probably one of the worst things that they've done to Double D, but they do get punished for it in the end. No, it's not cruelty that lands this episode on the list. What lands this episode on the list is that it's, pardon the pun, almost a note-for-note -note remake of the Sticky Note episode. See, in that one, Ed and Eddie trick Double D into fumbling a bunch of bunk sticky notes to do all kinds of ridiculous things. Personally, a series ripping its off so blatantly is one of my pet peeves and almost unilaterally lands episodes on my worst lists. Unless it's like Spongebob that has a million ripoff episodes and worse episodes than redubs. If you're going to rip yourself off so blatantly, the least that you can do is justify why you're doing this and be funnier than the original. And this episode is nowhere near as funny as the episode that's ripping off. It's like diet soda. All of the health benefits of the original soda with some added cancer potential and none of the flavor. Cool. Weird. To be honest, I had a hard time filling up this list. I mean, the first four episodes on the list were pretty bad, and I wouldn't watch them again if I could get away with it, but they weren't bad enough to make, like, an actual video on. And I was wondering if this was really a smart idea to make a worst episodes list of Ed and Eddie. That changes now as we get into the really bad episodes of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like, these are the kind of episodes that are bad enough that I would go out of my way to make an atrocity review on them. To Sir With Ed is one of the stupidest episodes in the entire series. This is the episode where Naz babysits Eddie, and Eddie thinks that he's on a date with Naz. It's the good old misunderstanding that, uh, well, for one, it breaks Naz as a character. Naz is the member of the cul de -sac that had the least development. She had the least amount of episodes and the least amount of appearances, if I'm not mistaken, of the main characters, at least. Her entire purpose of the show was to be eye candy. Well, as much eye candy as this show could showcase. She was just the girl that every male character except Jimmy and Rolf for some reason fawned over. That was where her character began and where it ended. They tried to give little bits of character her way, like making her a cheerleader in season 5, but it all seemed to build into the same character type with nothing really new. It wasn't the movie where she actually started to act like a person. And I blame this episode for why, really. In this episode, Naz is a babysitter and she proves what a terrible idea it is to let Naz babysit. She throws a party for God's sake. And no other character seems to have a problem with that. Even Double D. You know, responsible Double D. But the more significant problem with this episode is how it goes out of its way to humiliate Eddie for no real reason. Now, humiliation can be funny in a comedy setting. However, it's a different challenge than slapstick. And whenever the series goes for humiliation over slapstick, it almost always falls flat in the worst ways possible. I mean, this episode has the same problem that a lot of other bad episodes have. Eddie doesn't deserve any of this shit. And the show doesn't know how to make humiliation funny the way that it makes slapstick and pain funny. It starts with Eddie being babysat by a kid his age. Yeah, you absolutely can make that funny, but it requires more story. And this series doesn't really go for story. To make that funny, Eddie would have had to have done something to be punished by 
by his parents in that regard. Otherwise, it's just needless cruelty, and needless cruelty isn't funny. And the episode keeps building and building on this premise. The worst thing that Eddie does is assume that Naz is on a date with him, and yet he gets thrown into his own room while his same-age babysitter is throwing a party in his house. While his friends don't even seem to have a problem with this, despite them being the ones that convinced Eddie that this was a date in the first place. Everything I want is just outside the store. I know where you're going with this, oh, Eddie! Yeah. Alright, here's another predictable entry. Unlike with the other ones I put on this list, I think that I need to defend myself here. I reviewed this episode way, way back, and to be honest, it probably wasn't my best review. And some people had a problem with it. So let's see what I can do with a, a do-over. Because, as you might be able to tell, I still don't like this episode. Not the worst episode of Eddie and Eddie, but it's still top 10 bad, obviously. Eddie gets a cursed phone that constantly hurts him, all the while Double D gloats that his friend is in pain. That is the premise of the episode. Look around you, Eddie, and what do you see? It looks like you could use a new mattress, Eddie. Shall we ask Rolf if he's buried one somewhere? What did Eddie deserve to do this one? Well, after Rolf threw away a phone, Eddie decided that he wanted it and took it. Which does absolutely nothing to justify what happens to Eddie in this episode. It's a phone that Rolf didn't want. Yes, Rolf warned Eddie that the phone was cursed. But, uh, as we've established, Rolf can be kind of out of it. I mean, Rolf acted the exact same way when Jimmy brought a quiche to Naz's party. He's not the character that you use for warnings. And it's very hard to tell when we actually should take Rolf seriously. It's very reasonable to think that Rolf could have been talking about superstitious nonsense, because he does that half the time to begin with. But no, what lands this episode on the list specifically is Double D. He is completely unsympathetic, both in-universe and in a meta context. Whenever Eddie gets hit with anything, Double D is there to find the logical cause of it, and he does not give a single shit that his friend is in pain. If Eddie, I don't know, spontaneously blew up, this Double D would see a grenade fragment, be happy that he saw the grenade fragment, and walk into the next scene with nary a care because he's completely out of character in this episode. Let's talk about his man of science attitude. Every time the phone rings, Eddie gets hurt. This happens far too much for coincidence to be a scientific explanation. Either the phone is cursed or someone somewhere is intentionally trying to hurt Eddie. These are the logical answers. At this point, coincidence is illogical. I mean, how many times does a coincidence have to happen before you can't consider it a coincidence anymore? Far less than what Double D considers a coincidence. Some funny lines from Ed don't save this episode because... The episode itself is just not funny otherwise. Eddie doesn't really deserve any of the shit he got. He took a phone. A phone that someone else threw away. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And he's done far worse in other episodes and gotten away a lot lighter. Also, at the end of the episode, Eddie gives the phone away and he's still cursed. I mean, you could argue that the phone needed to be taken, not given, but that's tenuous because Rolf would have been more than happy for someone else to willingly take the phone away if that was the only way to get rid of the curse. And also, this episode ends with Double D gloating that, you know, there's no phone and his friend is still getting pummeled by every force of nature. This is just really unfunny and it does great damage to his character. Honestly, now that I think of it, this is the worst version of the Wolf episode. In that episode, Double D actually gave a shit when his friend was being pummeled. Oh, and you know, the writers knew that Rolf could be a little out there. Everything I want is just outside the store. <laughs> hey, that's mine! Ain't it weird how wallets can tell a lot about a dork? Oh boy, I've been getting requests to review this one from the beginning. Like, the beginning of my animated atrocities career. I've gotten requests for this one since 2013. So, why haven't I reviewed it? Well, I mean, I obviously do hate this episode. It's higher on the list than the episode that I actually did review. Well, as I learned in 2013, as early as Phase Freeze, just because an episode is bad doesn't mean that it's worth a review, even if it's the worst thing ever. It's kind of why I stopped reviewing G3 MLP. When you can sum up the problems of an episode in a sentence or two, generally it's not wise to try and make a 15 minute review out of it. It's barely enough to make a segment in a top 10 list. In your ad here, Kevin finds out Eddie's middle name. He's a dick about it. He gets Eddie to repeatedly humiliate himself to keep this under wraps. And then Kevin reveals Eddie's middle name anyway. And the cherry on top of the shit Sunday is that Double D gives out his middle name because he's actually in character in this episode. And Eddie goes and tells it to everyone because no good deed goes unpunished. This episode is just an exercise in cruelty and nothing about it is particularly funny because the people who do the most damage come out on top in the end. I really wish that I can rant about this more, but that's all there is to say about it. It's cruel and unfunny. I mean, if you want to know the kind of Ed, Ed, and Eddie episode that I would review, join me in the next one. Everything I want is just outside the store. This stuff's like gonna go straight to my thighs. <laughs> Do not look in her eyes! Let
Yes, you talk to stuff! You know what's weird about this show? The Valentine's special is the best of all the holiday specials. That, like, never happens. Valentine's specials are usually terrible, but Ed and Eddie's is actually really good. The Christmas episode definitely has its problems that I went into in my review, but the Halloween episode is the one that's going on this list. And pretty high, too. Honestly, I was surprised this high up, but it's 22 minutes, so it has twice the time to throw in crap. So, the main plot of this episode is that the writers had no idea for a Halloween episode and ripped off the treasure map episode. The plot is literally the same. Eddie has a bunk map from his brother that takes them in a circle. This one just takes twice as long. The wiki of the show even says, don't confuse the treasure map with the Spookyville map. But what lands this episode so high up on the list is the only source of comedy is Ed beating up innocent people. That is all this episode really is. Double D and Eddie on a wild goose chase in a circle while Ed has television vision and thinks that everyone is a monster and beats them senselessly for no real reason. Brilliant Halloween special, watching a character ruin everyone else's Halloween. And as far as Ed's televised delusions, both the R-rated movie episode and The Day the Ed Stood Still did this kind of thing much better. Honestly, if you want a good Ed and Eddie Halloween special, watch The Day the Ed Stood Still. Or the Alien episode, that one's pretty good too. Also, the ending doesn't help matters at all. After Ed beats up everyone, guess who gets punished? That's right! It's the other two Eds who had absolutely nothing to do with this shit. I wasn't expecting to hate this episode so much. I mean, it has a nice Halloween feel. The colors are just spectacular. And I do appreciate the horror movie references. But the actual story is shit. It's, it's worse than that. It's pointless shit. And it's just not funny. I don't think there's another cartoon cartoon holiday special that I would want to watch less than this one. Boo ha ha. No, boo hoo hoo is actually a better name. Everything I want is just outside the store. Let's get that custard out of your belly button, mister! Wait it! Let me go get a camera! <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why this episode isn't held up there as one of the most hated episodes of the show, like Tinker Ed or Your Ed Here or If It Smells Like an Ed. Which, by the way, it's not making this list because I actually like If It Smells Like an Ed. Because it does really tell a good mystery and it's full of funny moments, even if the ending does involve the gangers. It is actually probably the best story that Ed and Eddie has ever told, besides the movie, obviously. As for Cleanliness is Next to Edness, there is nothing to like about this episode at all. Simple plot, Double D wants to take a shower, but the world conspires to say no. And throughout the episode, he gets dirtier and more insane. Actually, no, insane would be funny. He gets more and more desperate. And desperation is not funny. As you might have guessed, I don't much like episodes like this. They're a kind of thing that I'd call a torture porn, which is a critical term that was not invented by me and has been used by actual big-name critics like real-world people that talk about, like, actual movies and stuff. Although, I will say it's a bit hyperbole to call this a torture porn. A torture porn, in the traditional sense, is a movie like Saw. It's there to show as much pain and gore as possible. Okay, yeah, it's definitely an exaggeration. But, you can definitely consider this one a torture episode at least. So, why do I have such a problem with these? Simple, they usually rely on one joke. They beat on the same character over and over again. The worse off that a character is, the more you sympathize with them and the less you want them to be beaten by the world. But episodes like this just go on and on and make you sympathize with the character more while they continue to get beaten on. I mean, if the character deserved it, it would be one thing, but in this episode, Double D does nothing to deserve his torment. It's the other Eds that woke him up on a Saturday. It'd also be another thing if the character gave the right reactions. But seeing Double D crack like this just isn't funny. It's more sad than anything. On top of that, I don't think any episode that has just one of the Eds as a focus could work really well. I mean, the name of the show is Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And it's no secret that they're heavily inspired by the Three Stooges. Could you imagine a short of just Curly working? No. Like the Three Stooges, the Eds are a trio. They go together, and I can't think of another episode that just has one of them on their own like this. And this episode showcases is just why, because it's a terrible idea. Anyway, one episode left, and let's be honest, you guys already know what it is. Everything I want is just outside the store. Talk about adding insects to injury. Two hours of stinking cleanup, plus a week's worth of detention for impersonating the principal. Smile for the Ed is my least favorite episode of the show, and I don't even know what to say about it. I mean, I feel like I've already talked about it a few times on this list, because it has bits and pieces of every other episode on this list. I mean, let's start with the obvious. Smile for the Ed is just patently not funny. This is another episode where they don't even seem to be trying to be funny. This episode is a rehash of your Ed here. I mean, it's the same thing. Kevin humiliating Eddie for no fucking reason. Kevin ruins Eddie's photo 
Yoda twice for no reason, making him one of the most despicable characters in history. Have I said that the show had a hard time of making humiliation funny and should just stick to slapstick? Because this episode is probably the biggest showcase of that. Nothing about this episode works. It's a miserable slog. And yes, this is the episode I probably should have given a full review. I might someday, who knows, if that's not too redundant. Because like most of the bad episodes of Ed and Eddie, there isn't much to talk about because they all tend to fail in the exact same way and their problems are very easy to sum up. Ed, Ed, and Eddie episodes simply fail when they aren't funny, when they forget to add the magic that makes all these disparate parts work together in harmony. For what it's worth, this was the only episode of the entire series that wasn't directed by Danny Antonucci, and that is totally believable considering how terrible this episode is. This is a series where I can imagine that only the creator could possibly get it right, and even sometimes he didn't get it right, as evidenced by the other numbers on this list. This is also an episode that I got in a ton of quests for, so I really wish that I could say more about it, especially considering it's the number one on this list. But I really can't articulate my hatred for this one more than saying it sucks because it sucks. Or it sucks because of the reasons that I've already mentioned from the upper tier episodes on this list. The only problem this episode doesn't have is the cankers. But beyond that, this episode has just about every problem from every other bad episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It exists just to humiliate one of the characters who doesn't deserve it in the select episode. And all along the way, it doesn't have the courtesy to be funny about it. The slapstick isn't there, it's boring as dog shit when it's not annoying as hell. And it's an episode that I actually have a very hard time finishing because it's just that miserable of an experience. And that's it for this list. Join us in the next one if you guys...